Let's go hunt it. Let's go hunt. Wanna wait it. Hooray. Just on the couch, wasn't close enough. <laughs> Better be touching, don't you, darling? Come back here, mate. <laughs> Come back here, mate. Oh. Oh, good girl, Nevaeh. Oh. Ooh, good girl, darling. What are you doing, Wolf? Look, I have soccer shoes on. Look, I have these shoes on. Get back over here, monkey man. Hold on, Wolf. some photos today. Doesn't work the horn, sorry mate. <laughs> you driving the truck? Hello darling. Okay. Yeah, it's a gear stick. Changing gears. Hello. Oh, hello. Darling. Close the door. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you want. Okay, we're closing the door. Yeah, I see. There's trees in the way. Drive around the trees. Don't hit the trees. <laughs> oh, yeah, tree. This is the trees. Oh, you see the car? Where's the car?
There she is. Hello, Maggie. <laughs> hey. Hello, Maggie. Hey. Hey. It's not really closed that well. Hey. Have, we finished, have we finished driving? Have we finished driving? Nevaeh loves a cuddle. That's right. Yeah. Oh, she loves a cuddle, doesn't she? Yeah. Uh, Nevaeh loves a cuddle. Yeah. Yeah.
whichever, whichever way you want to go, that's what I use. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 gates open and you know walk around and she just wants something out of me so it's not it's not much an issue obviously in the first couple of weeks while she's getting used to you you know you, you probably want to take a few more precautions but once you realize and she understands you know you're your boss and you're my new best friend then yeah no perfect that's what she needs yeah No, nah, that's right. You just need you just need it to respond when you're talking to her. No, that's a, that's that's the same as me. And then once you, once you know they're 100 percent responsive, they, you can take them anywhere. So um, no, that's no dramas. I might um, test her with our horse in the meantime. Um, but yeah, no, it sounds like it sounds like she's gonna love it. Yeah. Well, she won't she won't use it unless you're using it though. She's not likely to go run around by herself, but if you're off running the horses, she'd love to come with you. Easy, so basically, um, she can hold that for you know up to an hour easily. And so while you're while you're saddling horses and you sort of want to take her out of the, the equation, you can just put her in a drop. Um, and then do go about your business. And the same thing, if she decides she wants to get up without you releasing her on free, then uh, all I do is grab by the collar, bring her back to where I was, and tell her to go drop again. And she knows to wait until I release her with that big um, So with, with a couple of those basic rules in place and getting used to the routine around the horses, she's gonna love it. She's active, um, you know, she, she probably, All right, excellent. Well, thanks for your time on the phone, Vicky. I'll, uh, I'll have a chat to Central Coast Animal Care Facility and, um, and they can take it from there. Perfect. Thank you. Have a good day. Righto, bye. Could have been your future mum there, Nevaeh. Hey? Sorry. 
Exciting. Yeah. And a nice big property with horses and dams and another yeah. little chihuahua. She rides 20 k's on the horses every other day and said she'd train her to ride along with the horses with a long lead and come along with her and so she'd like it. So she just needs to transfer that energy from the motorbike to the horses and uh, not bite the motorbike tyres. So just, I told her all about that and um, will not bite the horses. Legs. Well, that's what I was <laughs> indirectly saying. Um, she is a little bit prey driven. She does want to go th for the goats through the fence. So I warned her about that. She said that she's had dogs before that went through the same thing. She sounds like she's um, you know, very high standards with the dogs performance, which is exactly like me. So it's the way that she's been trained. So, you know, she's going to ask him once and then take action, which is said usually like a run in the opposite direction or dogs can get through them uh, but I just said if you she understands that that's her home if you're a mum all she want to do is be with you I leave gates open and they want to be with me she's not a skate artist she doesn't want to disappear uh, I'm not sure what that means when it comes to kangaroos come jumping through the property though Slow to get up these days, poor yeah. Fredo. Hello, Miss Navea. Hello, Miss Navea. Oh. Oh. Oh, Navea. So, how do you feel about saying goodbye to Navea? Well, obviously, I'm, we're I'm happy. happy for her. Super happy for her. I'm happy for her because it's the the end of um, you know her, her era she's come a very long way you know I'm really proud of her um, for her now she's gonna go through the unfortunate process of separation from me and the farm and her pack um, but that's just all part of it isn't it yeah it's got to happen you know it? so She'll probably be a bit sad to begin with, but once she gets used to a new life, you know, create some new some new relationships there. She's got a lot of room to play with. She's got a dam to swim in. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Like you couldn't ask for more than that. Yeah, she for... said her last Kelpie, she'd open the front door and the Kelpie would just shoot down. It's about a 500 meter run to the dam and just jump in the dam, swim around for half an hour and just pop back. Know, after brekkie or something. So I can see Navea doing that. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty cool life. Just going to hope she doesn't uh, fly past and go past the horses on the way through. I was um, talking to a neighbour up the road who's got kelpies and he said he's, a kelpie's awesome until he sees the deer. Once he sees the deer, he could chase them all the way to Cessnock, which is about 50 kilometers up there. 
further up. So, you know, I dare say the first time she does that, you know, she'll probably have to get on the horse and go after her. But it's just a matter of exposure, training her not to chase, you know, wild animals or the, or the livestock. So yeah, she does have a thing for the goats. So, let's hope she doesn't learn that one the hard way with the horses. Hello, Shadow. Hello, Miss Shadow, you. Hello, Chopper. Hello, Chopper boy. Hello, Chopper boy. Hello, Chopper. Hello, Billy. Hey, that. Hello, Billy. Hello, Billy. Hello, Billy. Roscoe is the most jealous. Look like the goodest boy, doesn't, doesn't he? Like he really has this to a fine art, I think, giving that good boy look. Chance through. Good boy, man. Good job. Hey guys, so we're going in our morning walk and Chance is out and about. He's performing very well as he has done uh, leading up. Everyone's nice and calm. The dogs are starting to give him um, a fair crack of the whip and start to allow him to come up and say hello without being nervous. So it's a really positive sign that is only going to help him progress more and more. So let's keep an eye on that as we go for this walk. Um, see these guys like yep we're going let's do it <laughs> race up the hill uh but yeah let's go there he is following along oh and by the way our calendars are now up for uh, online ready to be purchased on amazon both us and australian market is that right mm -hmm. um so getting quick they sell out fast um we'll put up the link in the in the bio for you to uh order one for what is it? It's the 2023 Doggy Daycare Farm Trips calendar, isn't it? And thank you to everyone who's already purchased yeah, it. Yeah, there's been quite a um, few purchases already. Well, you have it. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, we're going to sneeze. Okay, go. Oh, you yeah, cool. Get it that bit oh, of Excuse me. <laughs> the kid has sneezed. Uh, I've got really bad hay fever. Sorry, uh, everybody. You can probably hear me sniffling in the background. Yeah. I'm taking any histamines, but yeah, it's a season. it just doesn't a weather, work at this time. A lot of water. Time. Everything's blooming. Yeah. Uh, nice and warm now, so the flowers are coming out. Oh, but, you can't um, stop the sneezes. Yeah. So, so 2023. But thank you to everyone who has already purchased it. Yes. We're really slow on letting everybody so know slow. that yeah. it, it is available. Uh, I think it was available a few weeks it ago. It was available a couple of weeks ago, and we got told about it, and all these things have been happening. We keep saying we've got to do uh, the calendar video. We, but understandably, some some more serious things some have happened, and, yeah, and, exactly. and a lot of stuff has kind of gone to the pushed, wayside. Pushed to the back. Uh, you know, calendars one. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm getting. Oh, you got him. <sighs> Horsefly. They're big, but big biters. Yeah. Um, and what was I saying? Oh, you know, and also like even birthdays and goodness yeah. me. But I oh, still got to do those birthdays. <gasps> it's okay. <laughs> We're we. It's I piling have, up. The I, work's piling up. I haven't forgotten. Oh, no, the yeah, most yeah. important things yeah. are yeah. are um you know happening. Yeah. You know. Uh. So 
What was I going to say? You're going to say thank you to all the thank people who have so already much. purchased the calendar. They're they obviously... found it themselves, That's right, you know. Yeah. And and um, so a few have been telling everyone about it in yeah. comments and. Yeah. You know, goodness, how so nice is that? Thank you for it's the support. Thank you for spreading so nice. the word. Thank um, you. But the official word is out that they are on sale in the American Amazon and Australian Amazon sites. Um, we'll put up the link to both um, sites in the link to the video. But um, getting quick. Get to, get well, hopefully, to um, we, we did have they, some trouble last year, yeah. and, and it was because. Um, Everyone tried to buy them all at once. And Amazon only allow us so many in their warehouse yeah. at one time. But so they did increase it for us this year because oh, okay. we, we sold out so fast last year. Okay. Um, so they did increase it for us. But I know, I think the last report I got was that there were 700 in the American market and 650 in the Australian market at the moment. Okay. So there Do we are, have extras outside of that? Like There was another 300 coming to each market. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's 1,000 going to each market. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy some great photos in there. And um, yeah, let's go on this walk. <sighs> All these flies are I know, just they go me. for you for some reason. They do, don't they? Need some of that fair regard. <laughs> Hello, Miss Reed. Hello, Miss Reed. And we've got Ziggy joining. Ziggy just turned up today, didn't you, mate? Ziggy hey. boy. He looks happy to be here. He does. On his holiday. Yep. We did a quick little training session with Ziggy in the driveway with Ziggy's mum. Yep. Do some fine tuning on her training techniques. She works very hard. She does. At training Ziggy. So tip of the hat to you. And um, she's doing very well. What are they working on? Uh, Ziggy's, <laughs> Ziggy's done a little bit of training himself. <laughs> and uh, uh, Ziggy's mum's let a couple of little things slip because Ziggy's quite persistent with food. Um, but I fixed all that up this morning, so shouldn't be a drama from here on in. He, um, he likes to cruise the bench, doesn't he? He like? does. <laughs> he likes to steal off the bench. We've had heaps of those, haven't we? Yeah. Roscoe, he was a big one. <laughs> Gus was another. Gus, Gus, he's a good one. Um, but then his other favourite thing is picnic goers at the park. Ooh, I had one of those. Yeah, Charlie was Back in the day. But I got some fresh sausages. Did some training in the driveway with him. Saw exactly what was going on. Fine tune the technique a little bit for uh, Ziggy's mum. And Ziggy was performing very well. That's great. Lily's got an interesting stick today. Lily! <laughs> it's a beautiful. It's like a bouquet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one, Lily. I love this grass, it's all very lush and green. This was part of our front lawn. down there. It's like the salad bar. Yeah. Or oh, you can eat salad bar. <laughs>
go run with horses. Probably a bit your, more your speed, aren't they? It does sound wonderful. So no word on the snake. Just for everyone at home. Yeah. No word on the snake. It's a good thing and um, no closure is not a great thing, but the fact that we've mowed the whole property and there's no snake on the ground tells me that it's a climber, which means they're non-venomous, so not a problem. It's just gone up a tree. Um, otherwise, we would have found it. So just for everyone at home, like I know that most people have heard it so many times before because we, we did used to talk about the fences a lot in the beginning um, and we haven't seen a snake we haven't seen a venomous snake yes for almost two years now yeah this would this be the third summer so they were all relocated in the beginning when we yeah, trapped lots. them all yeah, in yeah, yeah. with the fencing um, and we just literally there were what Oh goodness, I remember they like half half a dozen a day for a while. Like Luke was just constantly catching snakes and relocating them. There was um, a time there when staff would come into the garage and there'd be buckets up on the shelf and they're like, is this one laundry or is this one snake? Can I open this one? Is this one safe? Because as soon as I'd catch them, I'd just put them in a bucket. At the end of the day, I'd take them down the local creek and let them go. And uh, it was always a bit of a joke, like, oh, can I open this bucket? You know, it was because it was so regular back then, wasn't it? Yeah. So then, obviously, um, you know, we knew that it, the fencing was working. So for it to be a venomous snake um, right now, it would be a surprise. It would mean there's um, been a tree come down or a stick poke a hole in the fencing somewhere. Or maybe the flooding is or something. Flooding could have pushed something up. Yeah. yeah. There, so, are, there are obviously some weak points where we've had to channel water through and so there's some gates so they might be wedged open but most of the ones that I check they're all good um, but there's one down there but that wouldn't be the same one to get it over there so yeah anyway the fact that we didn't find it after mowing is a good sign because you find it one or two ways it either gets scared of the mower and you see it scoot off or the mower throws it out and you see it and it might have a, a bit of a flesh wound. Um, but either way you find it. So, yeah, means it was, because I did see the corner of it and I thought, oh, yep, it looks like it could be this, but you never really want to identify them from, you know, seven meters away. I wanted to get a bit closer, but what I thought it was was a common tree snake. Um, you know, any of those climbing snakes, yeah, they're fine, they don't pose much of a risk. Anyway, so this, to point an, out, an point update. Out, yeah, to point out the difference, I talk about, you know, venomous snakes and I talk about, you know, climbing snakes. In Australia, the general rule. I just want to clarify, um, you know, we often get some comments around this subject, but um, when I talk about snakes that climb and snakes that don't, and venomous snakes and non-venomous snakes, um, a venomous snake, if you pick it up by the tail, it can't climb back up its body and then bite you in the hand. It'll tr still try to hold its weight and try to bite on the leg or something like that. But a climbing snake, tree snakes, uh, carpet snakes, all those ones, they will climb back up their own body and then climb up along your hand. So the difference between those is, you know, how much of their body they can pull off the ground. So if we look at this shrub over here, a venomous snake can easily climb its way to the top of this because it doesn't have far to go. It's gonna take little steps, little steps, zigzag all the way up and eventually climb up. A venomous snake can easily climb up that hill right there. 
But what I'm talking about is a 900 high vertical lift with uh, no steps in between. It's got to create that uh, complete jump just on its strength of its own body. Venomous snakes can't do that, which is why that fence holds them out. So if you see a snake up high somewhere, don't automatically assume it's not venomous. Um, so when I talk about climbers and non-climbers, I'm talking about that vertical lift, not just the little steps going up bushes. I've seen red bellies and browns up top of these bushes like this, chasing frogs and birds and whatnot. So that's why I say a general rule, not a hard and fast rule. And um, the fence also goes um, like a couple feet under the ground. Yeah. Because they can they burrow, burrow. They, um, you know, other other rodents and stuff burrow, and then they go in there looking for them and come out the other side. They push through, uh, but that's why the fence goes 300 underground and 900 above ground. So it okay. it is it is quite a uh, big gap for them to bridge, and most snakes can't do it. And there's guards on the um, on the gates, like yeah, on the gates. There's uh, concrete hobs and then hard rubber belts that attach to the bottom so it creates a proper seal so nothing can get under it um, and nothing can get up the sides. We can go and have a look at one of the gates if you want. And there's over three kilometres of it. Three kilometres of snake fencing, yeah. So we've actually got a couple of barriers. We've got the external perimeter boundary and we've also got a boundary going around the house and around the, uh, the playground. So they've got to get through two fences. Uh, but usually the process is we see a snake First thing we do is secure the dogs, uh, and then I come back and catch the snake safely, release it to live another day. Snakes are a very important part of our ecosystem, and we need them. We should protect them. Uh, so I want to catch it and release it safely before the dogs catch it, and most likely play tug of war with it. So for me, we got to get the dogs out of there, and then we come back, which is why we lost that snake the other day because we had to secure the dogs. If I go in there and just pick up a snake straight away, all the dogs are going to be like, exactly like when I pick up a squeaker toy. Oh, you know, definitely. They, they're, they're going to think it's the best game in the world. Obviously, as soon as we saw it, I stopped filming because that's what Sam does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in those, should have kept it rolling. In those moments. But um, I was should it, should, No, know, but the reason why... You should be, it should be, instead of stop filming, it should be turn around so it just faces your face and then you're like come on guys this way let's go no i'll tell you i'll tell you why i was particularly um because matilda was there no it was miss violet oh yeah miss violet yeah it was miss, miss violet, violet was getting so she was on the scene. so it literally um came nose to nose with matilda yeah and but matilda you can call and she'll come straight to you yeah. but miss violet couldn't hear me yeah. And she, she just excited, she I just saw a bit of a flicker yeah. and some movement, and then she decided sure, she wanted to investigate. Yeah. Oh, so. Because I was going to run in and get Miss Violet, and then you know I looked I around. I did run and in all, and get Miss. You, no, you, you told had me. To, you said yeah. You go that way. That's right. Because all the dogs could follow you. Just oh, then, I thought people might think that we left poor Miss Violet to no, fend for herself. No, no, no. Sam went back for Miss Violet. No I, way. I, I, I turned back and I saw Sam tailing it down the thing with Miss Violet in her arm. <laughs> It was pretty funny. And the only reason we She run, would have licked that snake to oh, death. Yeah. The only reason we run is because we know how fast snakes can move. So I need to get the dogs out and me back over there to try and catch it before it disappears. As you saw, they, they, they disappear quite quick. Anyway, looks to be a non-venomous species anyway, if it's uh, nowhere to be seen. Supposedly they're out in force this, yep, yep, this year. Somewhere. After but all there's that so rain many, and... There's so many little ponds and puddles and frogs and frogs' legs, uh, sorry, frogs' eggs and all sorts. So the snakes are just following the sound. Um, that's why when we first put the snake fencing in, all our dams were just a chorus of frogs every night. And you know, you could literally, you could literally Ow. see um, the snakes on the other side of the fence just cruising around trying to find a way in. But anyway, all good.
Included in these pill tricks now, aren't you? It's exciting, isn't it, buddy? Hey, it's exciting, mate. Yeah, good boy, mate. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, good boy. Oh, look at the chest on this guy. Excited.
Stop. Enjoying Stop. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, while everyone's enjoying some water activities in the sun. Maggie over here. <laughs> Like, I'll just uh, sit this one out, swim but I gotta let Maggie know come on Maggie it's time to go and Miss Violet Aww. come on Miss Violet come on darling good girl let's go Catching up on some paperwork and I've got a few helpers in here with me. We've got puppy dogs everywhere. Yeah. See what he's been rolling in.
It's a bit of a windy day today. Don't know how uh, the microphone's gonna handle it, but it's been blowing a gale all day. And we've just got a bit of a uh, walk up the back for the Arvo with Chance. And let's see how it goes. Expecting that uh, to be fine as per usual, but we're talking about horses, the wind makes them go crazy. So let's hope uh, it's not having the same effect on the doggies. boy buddy guys so what I've just been doing and um, <clears throat> what I refer to it as is a, it's a silent walk so no verbal communication with the dogs just walking what seems to be aimlessly through the bush 
and turning direction randomly like this. And then what I'm doing is teaching the dog to just follow wherever I'm going. It does a couple of things. Firstly, um, it teaches the dog to keep checking in with me, keep looking back. Yep, Luke's still coming. Yep, okay, we're going in the right direction, let's go. Or they turn back and go, oh, they've all gone that way. Uh, I gotta go catch up. <clears throat> so then it teaches them to look more regularly so they don't get uh, left out by themselves. So the other thing it does is it's a low energy walk. It's not a, we're not throwing toys, we're not throwing sticks, um, we're not playing games. We're just exploring the surroundings and walking in random directions. Uh, it's a bit of a bond building exercise as well. Not only just for me to look for me for direction and um, guidance, but to look for each other and feed off uh, each other. So you want to make sure, some, well, if you've got a pack of dogs, your own pack, you want to try and make sure there's harmony and balance within your own pack. And not only does there have to be, you know, uh, an established hierarchy with yourself being at the top, but you also want the bond to grow and develop with the other pack members. And so the, what, how that's happening is they'll find themselves off in a distance, but then they'll start to look for each other. If they're going in a certain direction, instead of just ignoring them, they're starting to take note. Oh yeah, where are you going? Okay, I'm coming with you. And then the result is everyone sticks together and everyone starts to feed of each other. Everyone starts to rely on each other, gain trust, build a bond and create that solid path mentality where we're all in this together. We've all got each other's back uh, and we all look out for each other. So it's a pretty good thing when you get them to this point where everyone can just sort of walk nice and calm. See how Rosie's turning around at the end there, checking in. Um, I haven't been pointing it all out though on the walk because I didn't want them to hear my voice and rely on the fact that my voice is getting further away. Uh, otherwise it defeats the purpose. They can have their head down, look somewhere else and just hear me and gauge where I am based on the sound. So it is a silent walk. Um, this is how Maggie gets around. Obviously she can't hear anything. So this is what we've done with her from the beginning. But she's actually lost at the moment. She's following her nose looking for me. So if you see, she's all the way down here and she's following that trail that we just walked. So she's at the beginning of that loop we just did. So it's another good exercise for her to let herself, uh, or train herself, not to let herself get too far away, otherwise she'll start chasing her tail. Um, I'm not gonna make any concerted effort to go and find her. She's the one that needs to now rectify her mistake. And um, what we should see, oh, there we go, she's following down the hill, exactly where we just went. And then she'll start to get back to that shed and then come up this back way. So I'm just gonna be nice and still so she can't. So you guys had a, uh, a memory storage issue for the end of that video, so it cut off abruptly. Um, so I was just talking about you know, what the point of this exercise is. Maggie found herself too far away. Now I keep chasing the tail, trying to keep the tail gone. That's why I'm taking uh, deliberate random turns and walks on the path. I'm getting to a point where they start to go a little bit too far away, and then I turn. And then they should be. Here she comes. Well done, she's come up the back way here. So she's followed us all the way up the exact same path. She's following her nose the whole way. And eventually she's going to look up and see us and then come running over. There we go. Well done, Maggie. So she did well following her nose there. I'm going to reward her for following her nose and finding us, even though. So, guys, I know what's going on with this phone. It keeps cutting out. 
but uh, I just wanted to finish this point of the other thing that it creates here is when I stop walking, everyone else should stop walking. And so as you can see here, we're all in a nice tight pack and no one is wandering off. And so this is where that uh, bond is created that we're all in this together, we're all going the same place. Just because you've stopped doesn't mean I have to and run off, keep going. That's that's kind of attitude we want to um, you know, rectify that no matter what we're doing, we're all doing it together and it, it creates that um, harmony in that path and builds that bond within each other. And uh, I get them all looking towards me for where we're going, what we're doing. Um, I did it over in a T-junction there before, where they all stopped at the T-junction, looked around, what do we do now? Nothing's happening, so they just lie down, they start chewing a stick, they just do whatever they want to do, but nobody leaves the, the vicinity. Um, and then as soon as I start walking in a direction, they should all get up and start walking without me saying anything to them. So if I just see silent, make sure this is still running. Yep. If I just am silent and just start walking in a random direction, I should all get up and start following. Sticking in the path there, so I'm just heading off, off the path. Maggie's sticking nice and close on this run. Doesn't want to get herself lost again. But it's a good, uh, good learning curve for her. Nice, safe environment to do it. Roscoe. No. Shadow. Shadow. Good girl. Nope. Nope. Boy. Good dogs, Navaya. Tilly. Nope. Nope. Tank. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Ah. Good boy. Maggie. Maggie through. Good girl. Maggie through. No. Maggie through. Good girl. Down and gone. Go on. Lily. Lily. No. no. Lily. Miss Violet. Chopper. Good boy, good boy. Rosie, good girl. Matilda, good girl. Joey, good girl. Barney, good boy. So now that my home pack, and I'm calling my home pack my dogs plus my foster dogs, 
Um, now that they've been all together for a little while, I'm obviously making these gate exercises a lot more difficult for them. I'm opening the gate all the way up and um, crawling through one at a time. As you see with that one, it wasn't perfect, uh, but it still was very good in the fact that although some of them made a mistake, they were all fully controlled verbally. Yeah, Matilda made a little bit of a hesitation there where you know she wasn't sure exactly how far back to go. But that's all good. That's the fact that she's making the effort to uh, come back and wait until her turn to be called. And then the more I do this and the harder that I make it, the easier it's going to become for them to do these type of activities where it doesn't matter what we're doing, doesn't matter where we're going, uh, as soon as I create one of those boundaries and call one dog through at a time, um, <clears throat> they don't start shooting through, they don't start um, you know, making up their own mind of, oh, I'm going to race you through there. It's fully controlled. If I gave them a collective through, then they'd all shoot through and run right around the corner and probably end up down at the goats barking. But the idea is that we want to control them. So initially I start with me opening the gate up as wide as I am and then they all go through my legs so they can't physically run around me. But now with that one I'm opening it all the way up and stepping back and there's plenty of room to run through but I'm just asking them to um, wait to be invited. So one on one they can all do that, no trouble at all. It's very easy. As a big group though, it's uh, a lot more difficult um, for them to achieve successfully. So, but all I'm trying to say is these guys have come a really long way. They're at a point now where I'm going to start doing more of those because they are all quite capable. And um, we'll see how those exercises look in about another couple of weeks. It's me.